resource and sagacity. Oliver is a great western tank engine. The other railway wanted to scrap him, so he ran away. Isabel, his faithful coach, came too, and so did Toad, a brake van. At the last moment they were nearly caught, but Douglas saved them. The fat controller was pleased and said that when Oliver was mended, he could help Duck with his branch line. We'll give you all great western colours, like Duck, he said kindly. That will help you to forget your troubles. Oh, thank you, sir, said Oliver happily. Duck's branch starts from the big station. When Oliver started work, he often met other engines there. They all wanted to know about his adventures. Amazing, Henry would remark. Oliver, said James, has resource. And sagacity, put in Gordon. He is an example to us all. You're too kind, giggled Oliver modestly. But he was only a tank engine after all. No big engine had ever said admiring things to him before. I'm sorry to say that it made him puffed up in the smoke box. The fat controller rescued another coach, called Dulcie. She trundled along with Isabel. Oliver sang, Oh, Isabel's a funny coach, and so is Dulcie too. If I didn't look after them, they'd not know what to do. Just listen to him. Just listen to him, twittered Dulcie. He's proud. He's conceited. He's heading for trouble. Isabel sadly replied. I feel it in my frames, she shrieked as they rounded a curve. Oliver just laughed. Henry says I'm amazing. He's right. What do I care for trouble? I just push it aside. All trucks are badly behaved, but ballast trucks are worst of all. Donald, Douglas and Duck warned Oliver about this. You think I can't manage, he said huffily. Gordon knows better. He says I'm sagacious. You may be good gracious, but say no more, Duck. It's maybe a pity, but the wee engine'll just have to learn. Today, Oliver took the trucks by himself for the first time. He pulled the loaded ones to a siding and pushed empties to the chute. Then he came back full of confidence to take the loaded wagons away. The loaded trucks were comfortable and didn't want to move. They had just realised, too, that they had a different engine. Duck, we know, they grumbled. And Donald, and Douglas. What right has Oliver to poke his funnel in here? Look sharp, puffed Oliver. Smartly there. That's not the way to speak. Pay him out. The trucks moved off easily, and Oliver thought he had them in control. Trucks, he told himself proudly. Don't play tricks on me. I'll arrange them on the middle road and start away as soon as Duck arrives. I can't understand why he says they're so troublesome. They reached the station's throat. Oliver's brakes came on with a groan. But brakes were useless against loaded, surging trucks. They pushed forward, yelling, On, 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 on! Oliver fought hard, but still they forced him on and on and on. Their efforts slackened at last. I'm winning, he gasped. If only... But it was too late. One moment his rear wheels were on the rails. The next they had none and he was bunkered down in the turntable well, with a deluge of ballast all round him. When Duck arrived, he was stopped outside the station and flagged to the platform. He surveyed the wreckage. Hello, Oliver, he remarked. Have you been a good, gracious engine? Big pardon, of course, but we don't really like that sort of surprise. Donald and Douglas will miss their turntable. Later that day, Donald and Douglas spoke pungently in Scots and the fat controller spoke pointedly in English. All three left Oliver in no doubt at all, but so far from being sagacious, he was a very silly engine.